Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, we're going to uh, kick off the presentation now. Um, so uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, this uh, webinar is entitled uh, Construction Industry Accounts Lite, uh, the right tool for the job. So um, CIA Lite is a uh, package, is, a, is an accounting package that we as HVXL are resellers of. Uh, and I'm delighted to welcome uh, uh, my colleague uh, Carl Perbrick from a company Clipit Solutions. Um, Carl is, uh, works for Clipit Solutions, he's the sales director and he's going to be doing the demonstration for us. Um, hello Carl. Hi Anthony, are you okay? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, we can hear you all fine. So uh, Carl, Carl and Clipit Solutions are based down in Yeovil. Uh, we, HVXL, are based up in uh, Bristol, so it's not too far, but uh, this uh, technology here allows us to uh, provide demonstrations in this way to you, uh, so that's all very good. So on on um, on, on on your screen, you should see uh, there. Um, it's a little introduction to myself and Carl. Um, so as I said, Carl is the sales director for Clipit Solutions. He's uh, been with the company for 13 years, uh, so uh, very uh, experienced in uh, accounting needs for construction. Um, as I said, they are developers of the CIA light, uh, and Carl can advise on uh, issues to do with CIS, flat filing, uh, HMRC requirements, and uh, general uh, accounting needs for builders and the trade. Myself, I'm Anthony Bottibol. Uh, I'm the marketing and sales manager at HVXL. Uh, so I too have about nine years experience with uh, estimating software and uh, other construction software packages that we are developers of. Um, I also provide business consultations and advice on uh, marketing and sales and uh, software uh, and uh, manage the uh, sales team and uh, marketing teams here at uh, HPXL. So a little bit about construction industry accounts before I pass on to Carl. Um, so um, CIA Light will do all uh, things like job costing, CIS, VAT, um, and there is an optional PAYE module. Uh, it, it is an additional module uh, which uh, Carl may touch on uh, in the presentation. Um, it's, a, it's a case of whether you actually need that or not. Uh, the, the package is specifically written for the construction industry, so um, there's no need for sort of bolt-ons or use of spreadsheets or anything like that, which uh, is, is, is quite common with other accounting packages. Um, so, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, all the nuances uh, and, and, and weirdness of the industry uh, is all uh, catered for within uh, this package, uh, which is why uh, it's actually backed by HVXL. So, uh, we don't, uh, have, we've never developed our own accounting uh, software package. We uh, looked around the market probably about six years ago now, I think, um, and uh, looked, as I say, looked at various packages and identified CIA Lite as the package best suited. Uh, for um, the uh, SME market, so uh, that's why uh, we've got this partnership with Clipit Solutions, and it's why um, we're, we're all here today to see this software. Um, and uh, one of one of the good things about the package is that it does keep you up to date with uh, legislation as it changes. So uh, I think uh, the last time I did, uh, I personally did a presentation like this was about three years ago, when there was a lot of updates to um, uh, online VAT filing and things like that, and um, the uh, CIA package was uh, all ready for that way before uh, that, that came in. Uh, so it keeps you up to date with legislation, which is very useful indeed. So as I touched on there, CIA Lite has full integration with the HMRC website, so there's no need to be doing one thing in the software and then going to the HMRC website, which maybe some of you are already doing. Um, so so the, the, there's no need to be duplicating anything. Uh, once it's done in CIA, it will send it off to the HMRC website. There is a link there. Uh, and also um, there, is a, there is a link that we've uh, uh, both written uh, allowing uh, um, an integration from Estimator Express into CIA Lite. So uh, that actually allows you to compare your budgeted costs or your estimated costs uh, and, and compare those with the actual costs within CIA. Um, it's obviously very useful for uh, analyzing your business, maybe looking at the estimates and uh, where the estimates are maybe uh, uh, a bit high or a bit low in certain areas. Um, and uh, being able to do that comparison is uh, very useful indeed. 
So that's uh, the, the the very basics of CIA, um, uh, who we are, and uh, you know why why we're here today. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to dwell on that too long because I want to get you all to uh, have a look at the CIA package today. So uh, without further ado, if you bear with us a moment, I'm going to uh, transfer this connection over to Carl, uh, and hopefully you should start to see what's on Carl's screen. But if you just bear with us while we uh, flip this connection over. Okay, can you, is that my screen now, Anthony? Yes, I can see your screen, so uh, that should be all good for everyone. Brilliant. Okay, well, morning, everybody. What we're going to do today is just take you through the software, uh, just trying to explain what makes the software work well for the construction industry. So, as Anthony touched on it earlier, the nuances, job costing is probably the single biggest reason people decide on software like ours. Um, there's obviously the CIS requirements, and for some of you who may be involved in uh, dealing with application for payments, certificates and retentions off the back of that as well. Um, so what we'll do today is take you through, today I'm trying to show you what the software can do as much as, rather than uh, how to use it. Any Anybody who buys our software, you get a training package included in it. So what I'm going to cover here in probably less than an hour, three quarters of an hour, you have six hours one-on-one -on -one online training with one of our trainers to actually bed that down with you so you can be using the software properly. Um, okay, so what we'll do, we'll get started. First of all, I'll give you a bit of background, how to set up some of the basic information, how to set up a supplier, a subcontractor, a job, that sort of thing. So by giving you that bit of background, it just it just makes the software click together a bit easier how, how it would be used. So. First of all, adding a supplier to the system. So those of you with other account software, very similar. Basically, you go into the suppliers, hit add, and just fill in the boxes. So code, if you're dealing with, I don't know, say you're adding Travis Perkins, your code for them might be Travo1, and then you just record the, the address of your Travis Perkins office. Um, so basic information through there. Contact preference, I'll just point out here, we have an email option. So if you want to email remittance devices, invoices, statements, that sort of thing, that can be set up to go straight from the software. Um, we then have basic contact details, phone numbers, email addresses, and so on. So all of that is fairly standard. One extra box down the bottom is asking if they're a subcontractor. That's for the CIS scheme and everything like that. So we'll, we'll come back to a, a sub in the CIS in a moment. So for a supplier, that might be as much as you bother filling in, but you can record things like your payment type, um, those of you that pay by backs online, the software can link to your actual banking software. So rather than go in and key in online with your bank who you're paying and how much, this can produce a file to do that for you. Uh, I won't dwell on that too much at the moment, but it's, it's there available if possible if need be. Um, so you've just got things like uh, any discount terms you have, payment terms, pay by days is your uh, when invoices are due. So if it's the end of the following month, 30 days, next week, whatever it might be. Um, so just basic information uh, for a supplier. As I said, if they were a subcontractor, we'd have ticked this box. I'll do that now, and we'll just see an extra couple of tabs come up the top to deal with the CIS. Um, so when you've got a subcontractor, you choose what type of subcontractor they are, and then fill in the relevant boxes for that type of subby. Those you've already used, you've already verified either over the phone or on the website, you can record the verification number and tax deduction that you've already been given. Any new subbies you take on, you can simply hit the verify button there, and that will go onto the HMRC and come back and update the verification details for you automatically. So it just saves the phone call or, or going online. Okay. The other part for subcontractors, if you want to, you can record things such as their insurance details and expiry dates uh, and CFCS cards. So it's just information to hand so you know when things are running out of date. So that's optional. Some of our customers do, some don't record that. Okay, but apart from that, it's the same questions as for a supplier. So it's tagged and the software knows they're a subcontractor. We'll put some invoices on and make some payments a bit later and we'll show you the CIS tax being calculated and everything as well. Okay, moving on to the next thing, setting up the jobs. As Anthony said, we have a, a link with Estimator Express. So if you've, if you've done an estimate on their software and um, you've won the contract, you can export that. So when you get into this screen, it will tell you that there's one ready to go. If I just pull up in the best Blue Peter traditions, ones I've done here before, basically the, when you've done the estimate, you can choose how you export it. 
you can either choose a detailed one like I have here so you can see materials is broken down into subsections or you can just have a, a summary where you just have a total for materials, a total for plant, or whatever else is necessary for that job. You can also export by build phase and so on. So really the idea is it's as flexible as you need it to be to get you the information you need to see how you're doing on a job, what the costs are. Each of the subsections have a, a budget, as you can see here. So the idea is you're comparing actual costs as they come in via invoices and so on against your budget so you can see what you're doing. You can also add new costs and revenue codes partway through a job. So if you've got a job where you're starting to get into a lot of variations, you can set up new codes to record that. So it doesn't look like you're going over budget for the original estimate, you can record it separately. Same for the revenue, you may have given them a price on a particular job, uh, £61,000. If you're then getting variations coming in that you want to bill separately, you can have separate codes to book that so you know, know what's happening on the job. And I'd say that's probably the heart and soul really of the software. Um, what I say to a lot of our customers, the job costing is the most important part of the software. That's where you make or lose money. The accounts is almost a byproduct from it. So the reason, if I want to name one reason people buy the software, it's to control the cost and know exactly what's being spent on each contract. Okay. What I want to do now is just get into day-to-day -day running of the software. Okay, so the, the most common transaction, the most common thing you get through the post is your purchase invoices. So if I just put those on, I can then run through payments and then we can cover the CRS returns from the back of that. So to post an invoice, you go to purchase and invoice. First thing you want to know is the supplier that you've got an invoice from. So just type their code straight in if you know it. If you're unsure of a code you set up, this box is just a lookup. So we we'll just go through. Invoice number comes off the invoice you've got sat in front of you, as does the date of the invoice, and the system will work out the payment date, um, the payment due date, I should say, uh, based on the payment terms we set up for the supplier. So in this case, the end of the following month, that can be overwritten if necessary. So that's the invoice we've got from Bradford's here. It's, say, for £1,000 plus the VAT. You can overwrite the VAT amounts if you get penny rounding differences and so on. And any discount terms you've set up, you can put in, or if you've got a discount on that figure, you can say that. Again, final screen here, the most important part, this is where you can allocate that £1,000 of products across the job or jobs that's been used. Um, really, the amount of information you type in here really is driven by what you want to see on your reports. The more you type in, the more information you get. Obviously, it takes longer, so it's a balancing process. But... For argument's sake, on that invoice of £1,000, one line is for, for £250 worth of bricks we'll go for. Okay, You can put in the quantity of bricks if you want to see that, and then you just say the job it was for. So I'm going to book it to job three, and I've just got a materials cost code on that job. Okay, So that goes up into the viewer here, and the software knows you've got £750 left on that invoice. There might have been another £250 of bricks just going to a different job. Okay, so you just work your way through to post all the information in. Software has a few rules it has to apply to. First one being it's got to make sure you job cost that information. So if you miss a bit or type something wrong, it'll keep an eye on you and know that there's £500 left. So we'll say there was also £500 of tiles on that job. Okay, the simple process and what that's doing now, if I save that, that's updating the job, the accounts, everything all in one hit. So quite a simple, straightforward process, similar to, to any other account system. Um, once that invoice is entered, you go back, you might have another invoice in the same envelope from the same supplier. So it defaults to the same supplier. It's also got information down the bottom of the last invoice that was entered. So the phone goes, you come back, did I do that or not? You know where you are all the time. Okay, while I'm here, I'll also put on a subcontractor invoice. It's basically the same. You say who the supplier subcontractor is, and from the setup, the software will know if they're a subcontractor. So hangover from the old system, I still call him CIS4 to remind me that's a, a taxable subby. So it's Joe Bloggs Builders has now sent me an invoice, invoice number, invoice date, basically exactly the same questions as was asked for the supplier. In fact, the only difference between putting on a supplier and a subcontractor invoice is on this next screen where there's an extra box because it's a tax deductible subcontract here, it'll ask me if there's a material figure. Um, obviously, it needs to know that for calculating and deducting the CIS tax. So I'll say of that £560, £100 of it is um, materials. Okay. 
And then what we'll do, just take it off, uh, is go and book it to a job. So I'll just book it on one job there just for speed. So the whole £560, you can put in a description of the work done there if you want to. Again, it's balancing time against what you need to see on your report. And I'll book that to a subcontractor cost code. So literally that one box is the only difference between putting on a supplier and a subcontractor invoice. Okay. What we'll do now is go into the, the paying of invoices. Um, so you might run things like a payment due list to see what's due as of, let's say, the end of the month. You can run this just for suppliers or just subcontractors or both, depending on what you're after. Basically, you're replicating a statement that you might get from a supplier. So it will just list for each person any invoices outstanding and the total due. To physically pay an invoice through the system, you go into invoice payment. All you do through there is go in, choose who you're paying. So if we call up Bradford, who we put the invoice on for just now, and it will list all of the outstanding invoices. So what you can do, holding down the control key here, you can see I'm selecting individual invoices to pay, or holding down the shift key, I can see I'm paying all of those. So however you want to, you just go in and allocate the payments. If you're only paying part of an invoice, you just say we're only paying £1,000 there, and it will know there's £200 outstanding. So quite simple to allocate what you're paying. Go to the totals, make sure you've done your maths right, and it will just pay it as of today. Very simple. Subcontractor, similar, but obviously we have the, the tax issue with this person. So, again, choose who you're paying. It will list the outstanding invoices. So there's the one we put on earlier. We'll pay it all. You see it's confirming the material content. So this time when we go to the totals, it knows you're paying £672. 112 of that was VAT, and 100 was materials. I also have this person set up to have CITB deducted. But basically, what's left is £453 that's taxable. Obviously, it will take 20% of that for this person, and he'll end up being paid the rest of £574. So it's just showing you the tax being calculated and deducted there automatically. Okay. So that's it again. So the supplier and the subcontractor payment runs very similar. The software knows it's a subcontractor and will do the rest for you automatically. Once you finish making all your payments, it will give you a list to write out your checks. We'll do the back payments or however you decide to go and do it. If you send remittance devices, you can go and run that automatically as well. So we've got two here for the two people we've paid. One is Bradford's. Now, this is just a black and white company name. That can be imported as your company logo and so on. So it's just showing Bradford's what's been paid, and there's a balance outstanding when we only pay part of it. And the other one is for the subcontractor, where it shows the tax deducted. We've got the print fax email button down here, and that, that links to the contact preference. So say you pay 20 people, hit that. Anybody with a preference of email, they get a PDF of this sent to them. Anybody else will come out of the printer ready to be uh, posted. Okay, so that's paying invoices. Obviously, that takes us neatly on to the CIS returns and so on. So most of you are probably doing it on, on the website or on the paper-based system they have. With the software, what it can do is return for you. You are going to prepare a monthly return, and it will default to February, which is what you'll be running. I'm going to manually change this to March, because where I'm doing DEMS all the time, I've already done my February one. You'll never change that date, because you'll obviously always be doing it at the right point. And what this will simply do is just list for your subcontractors the payments, the materials, the tax deducted, and so on, the same information that goes on the actual return. You would save that so the system can then actually submit the return for you. These tick boxes you'll all recognize. They're the same as are on the website or on the paper-based system. What you'll do is tick and do your declaration exactly the same, generate the file, and then submit. What that will do is then send it straight to the HMRC. You'll get the email back from them, the same as you do at the moment, confirming they've got it. So that it's just a lot easier. It will calculate, do the whole lot for you. You don't need to keep separate spreadsheets or, or anything to, to control the information. So that's the return sent to the HMRC, exactly as you do at the moment. Obviously, also, you've held that tax. You need to pay it across. So we have a tax liability report you'd run for the month, which would detail all the payments, all the tax held, and the total tax due for that month. Finally, under the regulations, every month you have to send your subcontractor a statement detailing the payments and so on made for that month. And again, you've got your print fax email, so this could be sent automatically. Basically, all the information that's needed for the, for the regulations. Okay, 
So we've been accredited by the HMRC for doing everything necessary for the CIS. Those of you that are um, tax deductible on the sales side, the software will also allow tax to be deducted. So unlike uh, generic account systems where you have to put it through as like a part receipt but show you've still got some outstanding and, and then go and write that off separately, this will do it all through automatically in one process. And obviously it will give you the information of taxes being held against you so you can do the calculations to work out what you're due to pay by taking that off the tax you've held from subbies. So basically everything for the CIS. Okay, covering quite a lot of ground quickly here. Like I say, I'm going to speak to each of you afterwards just to see if you've got any questions or what individual run through. So I'm just trying to cover the highlights here, really. Right, running into job reports. Quite a lot there. This is all the job costing information you need. Keeping to the basics, first of all, we'll just look at the summary. This is often the first point that people look at. Now, all job reports are date sensitive. We'll default from 2000 until today, so in other words, a whole job. If you just want to look at a month or a week or whatever date range, you change it. Now, this is purely a summary. So for each of the cost codes you have set up on the job, I remember on the job I showed you a setup of earlier, I had materials broken down to more detail. So if, if that's the setup I have, that's what I can see. But all this will do is show me, for the period selected and then the whole job, obviously it's the same in this case, what you spent on each of the cost codes. No how, when or why or anything like that, what you spent. What your budget was, which remember can come across from HBXL. This isn't one of theirs. I haven't gone that far over budget. It's just a habit of using the same job all the time for the demonstration. So basically what you spent, if you set up budget, how much over budget, and the same for revenue and profit on a job. So a very quick look. Spent 840000 on materials, nearly $1.5 million as a whole, and billed $2 million. So we're doing all right, but we might want to see where the £840,000 gone on the materials part of that job. Various different reports will show that, depending on exactly how you want to see it. By analysis is my preferred one. So if we keep to the same job, and I'm just going to go for the last couple of months on it for now, just so we're not plowing through pages of paperwork, which I know are here. So going into the material section of the job, you see we've got it all listed through here, including today from Bradford's, the bricks we had, £250 of them, and this is the invoice details. So if I need to go into the filing cabinet to look at the original invoice, however we file it, file it, one of these numbers would refer back to it. So that would list, if I'd run it for the whole length of the job, every single item that's gone to that part of the job. Okay, looking at the descriptions, bricks, 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 and bricks we had today, partly a complete lack of imagination for me of what we might buy, partly for a reason, because you might look at that and say, right, you know, how much have we spent on bricks on this job? So not necessarily a day-to-day -day report you would use, I realize, but when, when it comes in, it's very handy. So what I've done there is just looked at that job for bricks. So by putting asterisks around it, anywhere with the word bricks, within the description line that you type in, it will go and find. So quite simply, at the end of the report, I can see we spent £123,000 on bricks on the job. Most of them from Bradford's. If I just wanted to, to change the filter and just look for a particular supplier like that auto, then that's just another filter that can be applied. So with that supplier, bricks on that job, that's what we had. So taking that further, you might be after a discount from him, so you might be saying all jobs the last six months, bricks, so you can see what you've had. Uh, you might be trying to hire a, a JCB. What do we normally pay for it? All jobs, last six months, JCB, and you'll see who you had it from, how much you paid, and the invoice details again if you need to go to the filing cabinet to find the details. So I say, not necessarily a day-to-day -day report, but it is really useful and saves a lot of time when you do have those questions. Um, just quickly, we'll go into to one final report, the job value report. This is more a, a summary, because what it will simply do is show one line per job, what the costs have been, the revenue, the, the profit or loss so far on the job, markup and profit margin. So just a very quick look at jobs. Key data fields here. I didn't bother explaining it when we set a job up, but you have three sections, three key data fields, as you can see. So an example of how they can be used, you might have a couple of different contract managers. So key data, one you could call it you know, Mike and Bob, whoever your contract managers are. So the idea is you can run this job just for Mike. So you'll see their jobs and what the markup profit margin, and you see at the bottom the, the overall average markup and profit margin. You might do new builds, extensions, 
that sort of thing. That might be ways of designing key data too. So just a couple of ideas there of how to group jobs together depending on the sort of information you need. Okay, as I say, a lot of other reports there, that gives you an idea and that covers most of what a lot of our customers want to have a look at initially. So, so I'll leave it at that point for now. Okay. Um, the final point is the sales side. <coughs> Sorry, the final major point we go through is the sales side. Um, the software allows you to raise invoices and the applications and so on. Invoices are very simple, very similar to the purchase side, same as any other system really. To raise an invoice, you go to sales invoice, tell the software who you're billing. This is just a list of our customers. Okay, um, so we're going to raise an invoice here, as I say. Invoice number, you can either have the system set to generate the number automatically, or for me, I'm obviously typing the number in, uh, in myself here. Invoice date and due date. And if you actually want to produce a physical invoice from here, if you tick this box, we'll get an extra couple of tabs. And this allows you to type in the, the description and everything that you want to appear on an invoice. So just to speed, just type in nonsense there. I'm going to say that was £5,000. OK, and you might add more lines. You might say so-and-so, so-and-so. Ten of those at £15 each. The idea is you just build up your invoice. You've got a little preview here to see what you're doing with it so far. So this again can be company details, color logos and so on. This will be the customer address. This will be the site address where it's different. And then the description of the work that you're putting in. So generic stuff, fairly standard. Total just confirms a VAT, so you can do a VAT split if you want. And again, you just book it to the relevant job. And that's where the revenue detail comes in that we showed you on the, the job invoice, the job reports earlier. So no rocket science there, really the same as any other system apart from the link to the jobs. With the applications, what you can do is raise an application and send out an application for this stage for maybe another £10,000. Obviously that might be a, a multi-stage job. So what you can do, um, when an application comes in, when you get the certificate, you can record that certificate. So I'll just go through this very quickly because I'm aware not all of you will do it, but just enough to, to get your interest. So for Mr. Smith on a particular job, you can see so far you've built 275000 and they've paid 240 so far. So say they've come back and certified another 10 to take it up to 250000 Retention, I've been doing it 2.5%, so I'll continue, and no discounts. But you recognize that from the certificates you get back from, from the architects, whoever it might be. If they need a VAT invoice off the back of that, you can produce them a VAT invoice. You might say, you know, as per certificate, so and so on it. <clears throat> and then what this will do is allow the money to be paid into the bank with a retention release date for your retention diary. So each stage it updates automatically, updating your retention diary. And at the end of that, it will produce you a VAT invoice okay, with your description on. But what people like is it has the breakdown of previously certified and so on. Those of you that aren't, don't have tax deducted, the material content and tax will be removed from that report, you won't see it. Okay, so probably raises many questions I have answers by showing you that. We have retention diaries, we have application summaries, we have contract histories to go into a lot more detail on that. I won't show that here to, to a mass audience because I know a lot of you it's not applicable for, so I just wanted to cover to give you an idea. Okay, so what we've gone through so far is the job costing, the CIS, and applications and retention. So exactly what I said at the beginning was the, the re main reason people go for software such as this as your generic account software. That just leaves the generic account software left. Um, again, from experience of going through these demonstrations one-on-one -on -one or in, in group environments like this, um, people don't want to go into the accounts in a great deal. So just basically taking you through... The software will do a VAT return for you, same as any account system really, and what it will do is show you the VAT return, so once you're happy with it, it will also submit the VAT return online for you in a very similar way to the CIS, so it will send it off, you'll just OK it, and again you get your email confirmation back from, from the HMRC. Okay, apart from that, it's just standard account system. It will produce a trial balance of profit and loss for you do your year-end process and everything you'd expect. 
there's a, a bank reconciliation for you to tick off all the transactions as they go on through the bank just to make sure the computerized system matches your, your real world system. So basically all your all your standard bits and pieces you'd expect from, from an account system really. Um, okay, that's it for the for the normal accounts and job cost thing. Obviously at the moment what the other major changes going on uh, for those of you dealing with PAYE is the new regulations coming out next year for the payroll. Again, I won't go into this too much depth at the moment because I know a lot of people, uh, their accountants do it or so on. So um, simply to say that, that with the payroll, when you, every time you run a payroll for next year, you have to do a submission to the HMRC, similar to the CIS, um, detailing the payments made, the tax and so on. Uh, so whether you do weekly, monthly, or weekly and monthly, every payroll run. So if you do a weekly, you then do a submission. If you do a monthly, you then do another submission back to the following week and so on. Um, all payroll software packages are going to have to be updated to do that. Ours is done. Ours is one of those. The advantage of our payroll, back to the typical, it's the job costing side of it. So it will allow you to job cost those hours to the relevant contracts. So say you've paid a guy 40 hours at his basic rate. You put 10 of those hours to a job. It will automatically apportion the say £10 an hour he's paid, but you can also set the system up to pro rata employer national assurance. So if you put 10 of those 40 hours to a job, it will put a quarter of your employer national assurance cost for him for that week to the job as well. So it's just a, a lot more flexibility within the job costing. Again, don't want to go into that too much depth. When I call people back over the next day or so after the, uh, after the webinar here, uh, I'll answer any questions one on one for, for that side of it. Okay, um, yeah, so like I said, I don't want to go into too much depth and bore people. I just want to give a quick overview of what the system's capable of. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions. I can't see any on the uh, system at the moment, Anthony. I don't know if there are any coming in there. Um, uh, I've got one of the questions, which is um, about how to uh, get the information out of SMO Express, which uh, I'll, um, I can quickly um, show people. Yeah, if you like, that'd be great. Okay. Um, okay. Well, thanks for that, Carl. Um, I think uh, you know, just, just watching through that, you know, I, I think uh, we're doing a lot of uh, budgeting and uh, uh, getting lots of questions from my directors about, uh, you know, why why we over budget here, why we over budget there. I do it all off a, a, a spreadsheet, and um, you need to it, it, yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, right. So uh, I'm just going to flip it over to my screen. Um, let's just, can you see Estimator Express, Carl? No, I've just got the, uh, okay. what you finish on the talk through at the beginning with CIA, the right tool for the job. Okay. There we go. Now there good. we go. Right, so yeah, one, one of the questions was um, specifically on Estimator Express and uh, where it is within Estimator Express that you actually uh, produce the um, uh, budgeted cost to get into CIA. Um, so this is the main menu of Estimator Express. Um, uh, a lot of the people on the demonstration today will be Estimator Express users, so you'll be familiar with this screen. Um, so but I'm going to go into one of my estimates. Uh, down the left-hand side here, I've got all the estimates that I do, which are mostly dummy estimates, but I'm going to go into this one. So it's a Mr. Thompson, a single-story extension. I'll just double-click that to enter into that job. And so these are all the phases of the job that I've estimated. So I've got all my estimated costs here. Uh, along the top here, I can go to uh, the Reports tab. And if you'll see in the top here, we've actually got this Accounts Export button. Um, so if I uh, just click on that, it drops down to uh, the uh, function to export to CIA. Uh, so if I just click that. As um, Carl uh, mentioned in his demonstration, that uh, when the when you um, choose of what costs to import, it can be a, a full detail report or it could be a simple report, just looking at material, labour, plant, subcontractors. Um, if we go for this full detail report, uh, this will actually uh, subdivide all the costs on the materials and the labour and the plant uh, and break that up into on the material side. It will break it up into the aggregate, the bricks, the blocks, uh, things like that. So. Um, you can you can get uh, the full report to go in there. Hit OK, 
uh, and that will then bring up a box allowing you to uh, save that to your desktop or wherever you want to save those so um, we can save that I can save that to my desktop uh, and that's there then on my desktop and that's then ready to uh, import into CIA uh, so very simple it's in the report section of Estimator Express it's just this little accounts button some of you may not have even seen it before <laughs> Um, but uh, but it is there, and uh, and that's uh, a very simple process on how you get those uh, budget costs out. Okay, if you do have any more questions, uh, then do uh, um, send send them through. Um, so you've got uh, um, some uh, software that, that, that you're viewing the webinar on today. Um, so any questions at all, please put it in there. As Carl mentioned, um, this is quite a, a, an overview that we're looking at today. So you can see how it's all contained within CIA um, so uh, putting all the information in having it all stored in one place uh, very very useful indeed um, and uh, as, as Carl said he'll be um, speaking to you one-to-one -to, -one to uh, run through um, uh, the, the, the package in more detail uh, with you um, what I'm just going to do quickly um, towards the end I'm just going to throw up a poll so this is actually going to throw something up on your screen uh, which you actually, you can actually click on and answer. Um, I just basically want to see um, who's um, currently um, uh, a, a user of Estimator Express. So, if you could answer that for me, I'd be very grateful. Um, it's just a nice little uh, thing to know. Um, okay, I'm just waiting for all the votes to come in there. Just one or two more. Okay, great. Uh, so that's everybody. I'm just going to throw the uh, I'm just going to throw the answers back here. Right. So as you can see there on screen, we've got uh, about uh, well, I can't see the answer most. So 60% uh, of, of of everyone here today are estimate Express users, and 40% not. So uh, that's uh, very useful for myself and Carl, so thank you for that. Okay, uh, I've got a question here for you, Carl. Okay. Um, it's uh, simply on the cost of the software, um, and uh, so, so how, how much the software costs? Yeah, no problem. I mean, we've got a couple of different versions of the software depending on exactly the customer's requirements, but as a pretty accurate for, for the people, uh, sort of your typical customers, Anthony, it's the light system that they go for, and the cost of that is £1,950, okay? Mm -hmm. That includes, obviously, the software that we've gone through today. Uh, it also includes the installation of it. So we install it. We install it, a dummy company for, for them to practice. It covers, as you bring it up there, a free copy for your accountant and uh, four hours online training. To be honest, uh, we've, we've made that six hours online training now. Um, from experience, most people are only taking two or three hours, and that's them up and running with it. Um, partly because also included in the price is the telephone support. Um, basically, any questions people get while they're using it, if it's just a, how do I do this, or I've done that wrong, or don't know what they've done wrong, they'll call, get straight to the support line here in the office, and we'll talk them through uh, and, and help them get up and running with it or answer any questions that are there. So that um, after sales support is very, very good. Um, as I say, it's available, you'll call, you'll get straight through to us and we'll sort you out. Um, after the first year, there's then an annual fee of £600 a year and that covers, again, the support, all the updates, so anything changed from legislation, like we've gone through a few bits here. Um, any new versions of the software release, they don't have to go out and buy version 2, version 3. Basically, everybody in the country is on the same version. So. Uh, no hidden costs, that's what you'll be paying, and it just keeps you up to date with everything. Any new versions of Windows that we need to run on, and, and so on. Okay, thanks for that, Carl. Um, I've got another uh, question, which um, is uh, asking how the uh, what, what, what are the main advantages of CIA over using uh, Sage? Yeah, no problem. The main advantages are the first bits we covered at the beginning, the, the construction specific parts, the job costing, the CIS, the applications, retentions, and so on. Now, Sage does have a couple modules <coughs> to bolt on for job costing and so on. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, ours is a lot more flexible. 
the advantage we have is this is written from the ground up purely for the construction industry. There's no other bits bolted onto it. That makes it a lot easier to use and a lot more flexible in the information you can get from the system. Um, I think I'm right in saying I've been told a couple of times by users, say on stage with the job costing module bolted on, if you have a couple of invoices, one is just for an office overhead and one is for some site materials, they have to be put on into different parts of the software to so update the job costs or not. With ours, it's all done in the same place and it runs through. So the learning curve's quicker, the actual ease of use and the inputting time is quicker, and it goes into a lot more detail. So the price I've given you for the light there is, is comparable with Stage and their Construct product in the, what it does, and you'll find that a lot more expensive, uh, both on initial costs and on annual support, and we do replace it a um, reasonable amount of times just on the ease of use aspect of it. Um, so yeah, it, it comes down to the fact it's written from the ground up for the industry, rather than bolted on to other packages and so on. Okay, thank, thanks for that, Carl. Yeah, the, um, I mean, that's one of the main reasons, actually, why we've, um, you know, uh, we've been working with Clip It for the last six years is, um, you know, I, I was part of the team that were looking at different accounts packages, and um, certainly we found that, uh, you know, so CIA was the most uh, contained package whereby you didn't have separate spreadsheets or anything floating around, um, you know, it, it can do it all. So, um, so yeah, definitely there. Okay, we don't have any more questions, um, so uh, what we'll uh, do is we'll uh, wrap up the presentation. Um, I'm just going to put uh, both our contact details on the screen there, so if you've got a pen and paper handy and want to uh, write down our email or uh, give, give us a call, uh, then you can do. Um, so um, Carl, uh, Carl Perbrick, um, his uh, email is carl at clipitsolutions.co.uk. Uh, and myself, you can email me. Um, nothing technical. Uh, anything technical, go to Carl. Uh, but um, but uh, you know, I, I'm here to help. So uh, uh, and I'm Anthony dot Bottibol. Uh, that's B O T I B O L at hbxl.co.uk. And down at the bottom there, you have a bit of info about um, our, our main sales number and also uh, a link through to uh, CIA on our website. Um, so there are some uh, FAQs on the website. Um, um, so on, on our website, um, I'm just uh, showing you on screen now, uh, there's plenty of information. So down the left hand side of uh, our navigation, there's a CIA accounts link. Uh, that will give you some information about CIA. Uh, there's some FAQs here that you can look at, uh, if, uh, frequently asked questions. Uh, I've got plenty of screenshots, uh, a bit of information about the support, uh, and then you can compare uh, additions and prices and things uh, in the compare tab. So there's our contact details uh, if you want to write those down. Uh, I'm going to leave those up for a little bit longer um, but uh, uh, as we don't have any more questions I'm going to uh, end the webinar. Um, thank you very much for everyone attending. Uh, I hope you found it useful uh, and uh, we'll be in touch uh, within the next uh, day or two uh, to see what you thought and to uh, maybe um, uh, uh, arrange one-to-ones or um, uh, discuss any questions you've got. Thanks a lot for uh, doing the demonstration, Carl. That's right. No, thank you for everybody. And uh, yeah, as you say, we'll we'll try and get in touch with people and just see what their thoughts are. Okay, great. Well, thanks a lot. And uh, we're going to sign off now. So thank you very much and uh, goodbye. <laughs>